Hello everybody, welcome to Great Berry Beauties. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thank you for talking about Greg's Beer Reviews. Today, look at this monster can. Big 32 ounce crowler. Uh, this is Flying Dog Brewing Barrel Age Gonzo Imperial Porter. And guys, they've made several different variations of this. Uh, according to this, come from my brother Rico. Uh, and he says it's the 2016 edition. And I've seen a bourbon barrel 2017 and a rum barrel in the 2017. But he tells me this is a 2016 edition. And his notes uh, say 2016 Flying Dog Barrel Age Gonzo Imperial Porter, 9.2%, 85 IBUs, according to the brewery website. Aged in oak whiskey barrels for 180 days with Warrior, Northern Brewer, and Cascade Hops. He says he believes. They bottle this, but not sure if it's distributed to different states or it's just brewery only. Filled on 0926.17. Today's the 30th. Four, it was put in the can four days ago. It was around $16 for this big 32-ounce can. 32 ounces. That's a lot of beer for 16 bucks. You figure that. Just do the math. 32. Half of that is 16. Six to sixteen would have been eight bucks. Bourbon barrel aged beer for eight bucks. Not too awful bad. Uh, the person who filled the crowd also told me they received the keg last year in September and it's been sitting in their cooler ever since. So they've been aging it uh, where he bought it a year. It's been sitting in the keg. They said they just hooked up the keg last week for growler and crawler fields, so this crawler should be the 2016 vintage. So, uh, sounds pretty damn tasty to me, guys. So, uh, can't wait to get this opened up, get it into the glass. Final beer of the evening for me here, guys. Uh, any other commercial notes that we need to talk about? Let me take a look. Now, 9.2, 85, IB, 85 IBUs. In addition to the rich toasted and chocolate notes in this Imperial Pour, our barrel aged version has vanilla oak notes and subtle whiskey warmth. So, let's get it open. That's a damn, that's a can now. That's a can of beer. No doubt. So, here we go. Nice hiss. And it's trying to come out of the can already. It ain't spewing or anything, but it's it's trying to get out. It's already up on top of the can. Ooh. And it's hard to pour this without doing that, getting a massive head. Especially when you're trying to pour something this big. So let me see if I can do this without pouring it all over the place. Food pairing cuisine is barbecue, cheese of earthy camembert fontina. Meat is beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat. Glass of water, pint, Becker night tumbler, mug, Stein Seidel. I got my favorite sniffer today. It says here you can sell it for a long period of time. Very, very well carbonated for a crowler. I mean, this wasn't done at the factory. This has been filled at a, uh, at a brew pub or, or where, and maybe even a beer store. Some of the beer stores now can do this. So, uh, big frothy head on it. That's all we're going to get out of the can right now, get into the glass. A good two fingers of head on that poor guys, which is very hard to pour this monster size can without pouring some down the center and, and producing this monster head. Definitely enough to share, which I intend to do. It is pitch black. I don't see any uh, red ruby notes around the thin part of the glass here. 
good looking, good looking. This is an imperial porter, not a stout. So a lot of times you'll get a lot of red rubiness around the thin part here. I'm not getting too much on this one. Let's get it to the nose. Not getting a lot of bourbon notes on it, I'll tell you that straight up. I am getting rich roasted almost to the burnt characteristics on the malt. Hints of some uh, black molasses. Maybe some licorice in there. Does have a nice sweetness to the back end. Smells pretty good, but I'm a little disappointed that they had it in bourbon barrels for 180 days and I'm not getting it on the nose. If I get it on the taste, let's find out. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. I am giving some whiskey notes on the taste, guys. It's not that big, rich bourbon taste. It's more of a straight-up whiskey than a bourbon. And I know bourbon is a whiskey, but uh, there are variations. To me, it tastes like a whiskey. And like, a, like it says here, uh, more of a whiskey warmth than a big bourbon notes on it. Now that it's... I've been flapping my gums and I'm smelling it each time that I go back. Little bit of hints of vanilla and some woodiness in there. It's going to open up, guys. I'm getting more and more of the, the whiskey notes as I sip on it. So, I got a feeling this is going to change. A little bit. We're going to get a little bit more of that as it warms up. It opens up to the to the air. I'm going to fill my glass up and leave enough in there for her. And we're going to go out on the deck and fire up a stogie and sip on this for 30 to 45 minutes and see what we end up with. Yeah, that's a ticket. Yeah, yeah. I'll be right back. All right, guys. I'm back. I'm sitting on about 45 minutes. Tasty beer. It is a tasty beer. It's not the big bourbon notes that I'm accustomed to on the barrel aged version. This is a whiskey barrel edition. Uh, I'm, I'm getting more of a rye whiskey barrel than I am any kind of bourbon notes on this. Uh, very nicely done. I mean, it is a nice barrel aged beer, but not so much of the bourbon notes that are usually that I'm accustomed to. And they've They've done it in whiskey barrels, and, uh, and bourbon is that type of whiskey, like I said earlier, but uh, not big bourbon notes on this beer. Uh, more of a rye whiskey uh, than anything else. Still very enjoyable, a nice different take on a, uh, a barrel-aged beer. Uh, nice roasted malt, burnt, black licorice, slight hint of some dark fruit in there. It's very pleasant, very, very nice beer for 9.2%. Uh, alcohol is fairly well hidden. There is some slight uh, booziness to it, but not off-putting. Nothing burning or anything like that. Just a little change up from a typical bourbon barrel aged beer. Very nice. Uh, I don't buy a lot of Flying Dog beers. A lot of them are available here. Uh, I haven't looked for any of these Imperial versions uh, that they've done. Uh, I did a bunch of their beers when I first started doing beer reviews and they were putting them in them little seven ounce bottles back then. They're not doing that anymore, which is a good thing. Uh, but this is a tasty beer. A great final beer of the evening. I enjoyed it. Final joke. Very nice beer, guys. Very, very nice beer. To me, I do think it's an A beer. A minus is what I'm going to give this. Uh, grade I would give this would be a 93. Uh, over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 4.14. A beer from them too. And final check in. We're going to Untapped. And Untapped has it at 4.05. So, 
pretty pretty much in agreement there. This is an eight-beer guy, so it's definitely worth picking up. Uh, like I said, I don't know how it's distributed, if they put it in the bottles, or it's Crowler or Growler Fields only. Uh, now they've done two different versions of the 2017 edition, which is the 2016, according to what Rico says. Uh, and like I said, I don't know how it's packaged or where you could pick those up at. Whether they bottled them or they're Growler or Crowler Fields, well, I, I don't have any idea, guys. So would like to try this 2017 edition, uh, whether it would be a rum or a bourbon barrel or a however or a whiskey barrel. But this is what these, this is what Rico sent me, and I enjoyed it. It was a great final beer of the evening for me. So, uh, with that being said, if you've had the 2016 edition of the Barrel Age Gonzo Imperial Porter, let me know what you think. I enjoyed it. It was very tasty. Until we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.